Welcome to iLecture Online and now we're going to talk about the weak force. The force that happens at extreme small ranges. It is much weaker than the nuclear strong force, only one millionth, in some cases they say one one hundred thousand to one one millionth the strength of the strong force, but it acts over a very small range, much smaller even than the nuclear strong force. And it is responsible, or at least it's the um, it gives us the interaction that provides the beta decay and that provides the decay of heavier quarks. For example, the beta decay is the ejection of an electron from a nucleus of an atom, and typically that's the ejection of an electron from a neutron in the nucleus of an atom. So when a neutron ejects an electron, a beta particle, the reason why we call an electron a beta particle because it's ejected from a nucleus or ejected from a neutron, it turns a neutron into a proton. So by doing that, since the makeup of a neutron and the makeup of a proton is determined by the types of quarks that are in there, that must mean that when it ejects an electron, it must change one quark into a different quark. And so what we know is that the interaction that's caused by the nuclear weak force causes this decay of particles and makes a change from one to another. Especially the heavier quarks, there is a set of heavier quarks, they decay into different quarks by this nuclear weak force interaction. Also, the uh, decay of, of uh, leptons can also occur due to the interaction of the weak force. Now, what is that? How does that work? Well, actually, we discovered that there are exchange particles. This was the, back in the 1980s, so it wasn't that long ago, that we discovered that the interacting particles that create, or that at least are the messenger, message carrier of the weak force, are called the W and Z bosons. Now, in the W bosons, we have a positive and negative charge type, and then we also have the Z bosons. Now, the bosons are uh, particles that have no structure to them. They're like point objects. It's kind of like an electron is a point object. There's no visible structure to the bosons. But yet, they're extremely massive in size. The W bosons are 80 giga electron volts, and the Z bosons are 91 giga electron volts in, in mass. Now, to compare that to the proton, a proton is about 938 mega electron volts for a proton or a neutron. A neutron is 939 mega electron volts, but you can see that is roughly 100 to 1. So the mass of a boson, which is an interchange particle of the weak force, is 100 times as massive as a proton and a neutron, which is kind of interesting. How does a particle that is 100 times the mass of a neutron be the cause of the ejection of an electron, a beta particle, and causes one quark, which is very tiny in comparison to the mass of a neutron, to change to a different quark? Very, very strange how that, how that works. But the, the answer to that is that the existence of a Z boson or W boson is very, very short. It only exists for a very tiny amount of time. For example, the interaction time is extremely small, anywhere from 1 to the minus 10, uh, 10 to the minus 10 to 10 to the minus 16 seconds. So therefore also the range is very small. Notice that the range is somewhere in the order of 10 to the minus 17 to 10 to the minus 18 meters, which means it's somewhere to, in the order of 1 100 to 1 1000 the diameter of a neutron. So imagine that the range is a very tiny little range, somewhere like that, for a very short period of time. And what happens is for that very short period of time, a boson is created that causes the split up or the change of one quark to another and that causes the ejection of a charge in the form of an electron in order to make that change happen. And so the, the, the nuclear weak force, as we call it nuclear weak force, is such a force that is the, the, the reason for that force is the decay from one particle to another. Now, we've discovered hundreds of particles already, with the vast majority of them being very unstable. They only last for a very small fraction of a second. They typically, they interact to this weak force and cause the ejection of neutrinos and electrons and, and photons and so forth, carry off the energy, carry off the change to make one particle change to another. Ultimately, most particles, like like uh, that have three quarks will ultimately decay into a proton and that's the most stable form of that type of material. Now of course 
we will talk about the details of how that interaction actually works and how the decay process works for each of those particles so you have a better idea of it. Right now we just have to understand that the interaction occurs of a very small range and by the creation of very, very heavy point particles that carry the message and cause that decay interaction to occur. And that is the purpose of the nuclear weak force.